It's because C.S. Lewis called it. We've taken our eyes off the prize and we've made ourselves the prize. And what I realised about this audience, I don't know what there was tonight, 10, 12,000 people. I used to think they were coming out to see bands like us. But what I realised was I'm coming out to see them. They're the treasure in the field that God has given to us. And that's, that's my joy in all of this. Between the Grooves is hosted by James Curtis, music director and morning man in the greater Toronto area on Joy Radio. Hosts James Curtis talk to artists and industry insiders to discover the connection between music and faith. You can connect with the show at faithstrongtoday.com slash between the grooves or via Twitter at between grooves. We are back. Here we are. Yes, sir. Whether you like it or not, we are back. Well, if you're listening, it's because you want to be back. Mm-hmm. And we're glad that you're listening. Absolutely. You know, we have a lot mm-hmm. of fun on this show. And the guests that we want to show off, in a sense, today is a guy that we've had on the podcast before. And he's he's become a friend. Um, it's all, mm-hmm. almost a year and a half since we've had Darren Mulligan from We Are Messengers on the podcast. We don't usually have a lot of repeat guests very often, but he has indeed become a friend. And he's a very thoughtful mm-hmm very provocative yes. person like he makes you think and sure. very often when you're having a conversation you don't necessarily expect the response that he gives because he's very blunt and genuine in his responses mm-hmm. and I appreciate that about him so I met him at the Kingdom Bound Music Festival just a few weeks back and I just all I did was send him a text I said hey I know yeah. you're here somewhere maybe I'll run into you and sure yeah. enough, he says, meet me at five o'clock. I'm going to be doing a meet and greet, but so we'll great. have a quick chat right away. As soon as I saw him, yeah. big bear hug. And then he said this to me, he says, so how are things going here at the festival? And I said, you know, it's interesting. It's been a little different. It's great that music is back. It's great that shows yes. are back. But I said to him, the one thing that's a little different this year is that a lot of artists are flying in and immediately flying out. They're not spending a lot mm. of time physically either checking out the rides or sure, sure. staying any length of time. And part of it, because they've got other gigs, they've got other places to, to go to and stuff. Part of it is just mm-hmm. this fear of being around people, right? Because of this post-COVID yes. uh, world that yes. we live in. And so it's been more, and what I told, told him, it's been more difficult to get some of these interviews. Yeah. This is what he said. He said, James, we're going to sit down. We're going to chat. Like, it wasn't good, me asking good. him. It was him telling me, we're going to sit down Initiating. and chat. He says, James, sure you enough. and I know each other well enough that anytime you want to sit and chat, I'm there. Yeah. Right? I'm here. Yeah. That's and awesome. So that's how it all started. And then I said, so when do you want to chat? He says, well, I've got my stage time. Uh, you know, I've got my show happening at such and such a time. When I'm done the show, right. at whatever, whatever time, I'll meet you right after the show and we'll sit and chat. <laughs> And can I tell and that you? that says a lot. Well, that, because... it, it speaks volumes. Mm-hmm. It really does. Can I tell you that's exactly what happened? He yeah. was done his set. He literally walked off the stage to the tent where I had set up my audio gear 50 feet away and sat down. Mm-hmm. There was no, I'm going to go to the washroom, bathroom. Right, I'm, right. I'm going to go get a drink of water. I just need a coffee. Uh, I need, yeah. I'm hungry. I need something to eat. No, he literally walked off, spoke to no one, walked straight up to me, sat down, mm. grabbed the mic, and we started talking. And, so good. and that is the conversation we want to share with you. And this is genuine conversation, literally right. walking off the stage. And this is Darren. Right. That's who he is. No, it, no pretense. Yeah. There's no, there's yeah. no, you know, fake Darren of, you know, this is the guy on the stage. And then like, he doesn't have time to turn off the personality. You know what I mean? He's, right. he's literally right. walked off the stage. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how you can walk <laughs> off the stage singing your heart out. I know if I sang my heart out, I couldn't even talk afterwards, but he's out right. there and he's, you know, hundred percent in ministry mode or something, you know? I love that. I love his heart. Let's get into it right now. Darren Mulligan from We Are Messengers on Between the Grooves. <laughs> Darren Mulligan from We Are Messengers. Now, we're chatting because we met before your set. You've just come off the stage doing a set. You're exhausted. You look tired. <laughs> You've been dancing around and stuff. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to get into our conversation before you went on the stage. And we yeah. were chatting a little bit about your little cabin can I say? Uh, you can, yeah. I want to hear about this thing. I've seen pictures you've posted on social media. Yeah. You've got this thing you built yourself. 
And you told me, okay, so you haven't run hydro lines to this place, but you do have power. Yeah, yeah. We got, we, when we moved to America eight years ago, we had to sell everything. We were broke, flat broke. And uh, even our home that we had. And it's just the way God is sometimes that we've been through a lot of suffering, a lot of heartache, a lot of disappointment, a lot of valleys in America, a lot of beautiful things too. Yeah. Um, and then we saw this little cottage on the internet uh, on the other side of the mountain where my father grew up in a one stone, one room stone cottage. And uh, it was for sale and it was really cheap. So we didn't even go to see it. We bought it from seeing a picture on the internet. Wow. And we got home and it's like a wee heaven on earth. It is like, it's 12 acres of woods, this little stone cottage with a stream running down past it, no electricity, just a generator and solar power. And it backs onto a mountain with 10,000 acres of lakes and just deer everywhere. And it's only 15 minutes from my mother's house. Oh, that's nice. So we go home for about four months a year in two months uh, splits. And we remember why we do this. Because mm -hmm. sometimes in the doing, you get lost in the doing. It's like C.S. Lewis calls it. He talks about it. You, you love telling about God. Somewhere along the line, you fall in love with telling until deep down in hell, all you care about is what you say about him. Right. You know? You're dangerous. right. And I find that a lot. I'm not going to point any fingers. I find that a lot in the music, in the Christian music business. Uh -huh. It becomes so much of a business. Oh, I, it's happened to me. Right. It, is, it happened to me about a few years ago where I started to look around and compare myself and try and keep up with the Joneses. And in that, I forgot about why I was doing it. Uh, Maybe It's Okay was actually the song that brought us out of that period. And uh, it was just me being honest with God. And I have a peace in my life and a contentment I never thought I'd have. You've known me for years. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm not sinning as much. And it's amazing how when you attempt to live a life that looks a tiny bit like Jesus, the joy comes upon you. You know, they talk about the enemy coming like a thief in the night. I think joy sneaks up on you too. And joy has, the word is not snook, sneaked. Sneaked, snuck, sneaked, snuck, snuck, I don't know. Let's say snook. <laughs> joy has snuck up on me and my family because we try to put things in the right place in the right order. So you're on the road a whole lot. Um, your family sometimes gets to join you? Yeah, sometimes, rarely anymore. Right. It's such a big operation. And if I'm being there's, honest... There's the business side of things again, but the that's side. the reality, right? But the reality is also that I am not capable of being a dad, a husband, a leader, a pastor, a singer, a businessman, 24 hours a day. So in order for me to do this well, I got to focus on it. And then when I'm at home, I have to focus on that. Better to be good uh, and be present than to be average and never present. I'll know? say one of the things I admire is when you are focused on we are messengers specifically uh, it's very evident in your social media <laughs> and when you are on your two week hiatus at your place we don't hear from you <laughs> and, and I except for maybe an occasional picture making us jealous right <laughs> but I admire yeah. that because a lot of time people don't know how to pull back yeah. and focus on what needs to be focused on if I didn't pull back and go home and be with my family and be with God, I, I may not have been here today. Uh, and I believe that. I certainly wouldn't have my wife. I would be estranged from my kids. And uh, that time, that peace has allowed our family to, to not just survive, but to thrive. And so we're healthy. Yeah. Everything in the right place at the right time. When you're really young, you know, like I see some of these 20-year-olds and they're running around trying to do everything all at once and wondering why they have no joy. It's because C.S. Lewis called it. We've taken our eyes off the prize mm -hmm. and we've made ourselves the prize. And what I realize about this audience, I don't know what there was tonight, 10, 12,000 people. I used to think they were coming out to see bands like us. But what I realized was I'm coming out to see them. They're the treasure in the field mm -hmm. that God has given to us. And that's, that's my joy in all of this. Um, you are uh, also in the worship tent this time around, or you're just on the main stage? No, I, I couldn't do it this time. Okay. Um, I love the wee worship tent, actually. Yeah, it's one yeah. of my favorites. But I didn't get in until, I think, 1 o'clock. And so we sound checked, and then the day was done. Right. So. I... Um I wanted the opportunity to introduce somebody in the worship tent because I wanted to go on stage and say, 
who's ready for a great concert? And I wanted everybody to cheer and say, yeah. And I said, well, you're in the wrong place. This is the worship tent. <laughs> no. <But they laughs> that know, was my plan, you know? They, they probably got it too. I've spent a lot of time with people today just laughing, cracking stupid jokes, yeah, making people laugh and feel awkward. Because I get tired of the seriousness of the Christian music industry. It's like we're all so serious all the time yeah. that we forget how to have a laugh. And what's attractive, when my wife fell in love with me, it wasn't because I was particularly good looking or anything. <laughs> she fell in love with me because I was funny. Right. Because I had uh, a quirkiness. I was okay being me at that time. Yeah. That all changed. But the world will be attracted to a people who, yes, can tackle the serious issues, but who know how to laugh and let loose and cut loose uh, in a God-honoring way. Right. How do your kids see you? They see me as, when I come home from tour, they see me as cantankerous. They see me as irritable. Yeah. They see me as wanting to hide. So when I come home, this is fine. This is just a one-day thing. Home tomorrow, I'll be grand. But when I come home after four, five, six days, I'm an introvert, so I'm so exhausted. Yeah. And they want the best of me. And it takes me probably 12 hours to, to reacclimatize to, I'm a daddy, I'm a husband. So initially they see me as a bit grumpy, right? And then after that they see me as a, a kind of a guy that loves messing, just loves messing, yeah. you know. It's funny you say that because I've brought my family with me at times to events that I'm working at, and they don't like coming with me anymore because I'm very focused on work. That's good, right? And so I admire why they don't want to come. I love their company, but they don't want to come because I'm focused on work and. They're just going to let me work. Yeah, but I'm sorry. That doesn't make you a, a bad man. No. Yeah. And I know that's not what you're saying. Right. But if you look at my heroes, my heroes are all construction workers and plumbers and truck drivers and guys working in fields. And, and honestly, when I was doing that, I was probably a better man. Yeah. Um, but they go to work. Their family aren't coming along and, you know, playing games in the middle of the day because they got to go to work. Right. So imagine my family were with me in my truck when I crashed in 840 on February 5th, they'd yep. all have been dead. Yeah. But again, our culture puts so much pressure on men who are uh, in ministry as such to be everything. We're, we're just men doing the best we can with the resources we have. I think beyond ministry, anybody in the spotlight, right? Absolutely. Think beyond even the Christian world, just anybody. There, yeah. The expectation is for you to have this certain persona, the certain um, elements in your life that everybody admires and looks up to, <laughs> and you're just a regular guy. Yeah, like my wife will do it to me sometimes. Like sometimes she'll say, you know, things. She'll try whenever she's mad at me. She'll say, "Oh, you're not the guy everyone else gets to see." And I say, "I'm totally the guy everyone else gets to see. You just need to let me breathe for <laughs> ten minutes." And and I understand that because she's carried our family. But I think we really, this is maybe it's a change of topic, but I think we have to, especially men, we have to remember that we're losing a lot of young men, older men too, to suicide. Just, there was a young woman in the crowd there who messaged me two days ago saying her dad, who was, I think he was in his late 50s, 60s, took his own life just three days ago. We have to allow men in the room to talk about how they feel about what's really going on because the pressure to be an awesome daddy an awesome businessman an awesome musician is too much to carry and I'm really blessed that I have a wife who yes might get you know a wee bit peed off with me sometimes but she understands and she serves me in ways that I don't deserve so I just say if you're a fella listen to this take a good check on your mental health yeah. Before it gets too far. Now, can I just add to that? Because I've, this is my pet peeve, okay? Is um, I had a conversation earlier today or yesterday about pastors, okay? And you go to church and then they have their men's ministry. And the person putting together the men's ministry event on a Saturday, maybe it's a, um, yeah. a men's breakfast or something like that. Because they're a pastor, all they know how to do is to put together an order of service and, and it's just a mini church service. Yeah. Why can't men just be men and get together and watch the game or yeah. go out, play around at golf or, or do something different? Why does it always have to be a church service? And that's my pet peeve. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be. It probably should be both. But sure. I think it should, probably should be more everyday, real world men connecting. And I, Bro, being a, an artist and the more successful we've got, the lonelier it becomes. 
in many ways it's a very isolating place to be but my favorite things aren't sitting in church meetings my favorite things is this yeah is having a conversation with a friend trying to figure out what's going on where yeah. god's moving and also just cutting loose a wee bit having a laugh yeah. I got a friend of mine who uh, I invited over. We hadn't get together in a, gotten together in a while, and uh, we we're just going to get together for a quick coffee. And yeah. I put air quotes around quick, because I think it lasted about three hours. <laughs> just drinking coffee. I mean, the coffee was cold, and I'm drinking slowly, just trying to make it last and stuff. And we're just talking. And then it was like we're looking at our watches thinking, yeah, we got to go. We got uh, things to do, you know? But, like, I go play tennis most days, two or three hours, and it clears my head for the day. We've got to take care of ourselves, fellas, and then we can take care of our wives and our kids, um, and also to afford them that time too. And that can be hard as well. Yeah, go easy. We I need like to that. go easy on each other. Yeah, I like that. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. I know you're exhausted from your set just minutes ago, and uh, thanks for dropping by to chat. Appreciate it. I'm very thankful for you. I'm very thankful for this station. You've had our backs from day one, and I, I don't forget that. The kingdom needs to work in partnership. It yeah. really does. Yeah. And that flows both ways, you know. I, th- I appreciate your heart and, and I appreciate your openness. You've always been really open when we've chatted. Um, it's because you've let me be open. Yeah, don't give me the credit cause, because I've had this conversation with others. Like when, when we have, you know, this, this show that we do, um, and I've, I may have told you this, it's not an interview. Yeah. We're having a conversation. That's it. And if, if you're going to call it an interview, I, I don't want anything to do with it, right? Well, an, in, an interview suggests that I'm going to get something out of it or some promotion or some whatever. What I've realized is all of my best laid plans, God raises up the men he wants to raise up. He raises up the women he wants to raise up. Work hard at what you're, you're crafted and what you've skilled at and your talents. But let God be God and quit taking ourselves so seriously yeah, yeah. I write songs I sing songs the Lord has let me be a big child and yes I deal with a lot of heavy things I get to write songs and my family are fed yeah how kind has God been you get to do something you love and your family are fed yeah we are privileged people oh you don't know how privileged we are how many people out there right now have jobs that they hate, that yeah. they, they detest, that they're just going through the grind. They're just doing it because they feel they have to do it. Yeah. Um, it. It's maybe not their passion, or maybe they're doing it because it's a ton of money. And yeah. you know, if that makes you happy, the money, all power to you. But I don't yeah. think you are. Do something you love. Money has never made me happy. I do think there's great honor in being a regular blue collar man or woman going mm-hmm. out taking care of your family, whether you like your job or not. But for those of us who get to do something we love, we, we need to make sure we enjoy it, that we make room for other people to grow in that too, and don't be greedy children and, and holding it all so tight. Yeah. Because God will take it someday, and then he'll give us something else, and that will be okay as well. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Appreciate it. Thanks again. Cheers. Wow. That was awesome. I mean, there's not much really to be said after listening to that conversation. <laughs> 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 Can I say, I love chatting with him because he's yeah. so down to earth right. and tells it like it is. That qu- right. that question about, you know, what's it like when you get home after being on the road and seeing your kids? Uh, Fact of the matter, I'm grumpy sometimes. Yeah, you would, you would think it would be like, oh, I'm so happy to see my kids and I hug them and we do lots of stuff together. No, 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 right. don't, don't bug me, <laughs> you know, don't right. be anywhere near me. My right. wife is the same way. If I'm at a radio event and uh, I'm representing the mm-hmm. radio station and she comes by because I've always said to her, you know, if you know, if it's in Toronto, as an example, come by, you know, ma- make a day of it. Come by, do something with the kids, right. drop by and see me. <laughs> she won't do that anymore. Yeah. She says, I, I get uh, not that I'm grumpy, You're in work mode. but I'm in f- I'm focused. I'm in work mode. And so she doesn't like that, James. She she likes the James mm-hmm. where I'm spending time and having conversation with her instead of you're not important what I'm doing right. right now is important. And to hear Darren mm-hmm. say that, it was just, it kind of blew me away, you know, because you expect, <laughs> you expect the response being, you know, oh, you know, I love my kids. Oh, and, so and spiritual. He, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he does love his kids, but he, he's honest so, and, and genuine about the right. fact that, you know, he's tired. He's he needs yep. to get into that 
dad mode versus yep. you know the how to de-escalate yeah, yeah and and that's that's the perfect mm. word for it de-escalate because um yeah. otherwise everything's all hype and you know how you get so busy when you're in the mode right in work mode oh, and stuff yeah. you get so busy and you're in that mode and that's the reason why for me when i'm doing the morning show like we were talking earlier um i do a morning show and and it's a show like it's it's entertainment yes like people don't right. like hearing that but it's it's you can call it ministry it if you is, want to. It is what it is. But, it, but it's entertainment. <laughs> it's me trying to put a smile on your face as you're heading to work. That, that's it, right? Mm-hmm. So horsing mm-hmm. around, having some fun, listening to some great music. Right. But I need to get out of that mode and because yep. I'm also the music director and I need to put the music director hat on. And I can't do that by snapping my fingers. I, that's why I go out, grab right. a coffee, walk around, just settle down about think, – think about the day ahead. Think about the stuff that I need to do, but then get into that mode and then focus on that. Right. Right, And that's exactly what he's saying. And and maybe that's what we need to do as human beings and whatever our jobs are, whatever our capacity is during the day Mm -hmm. to remain focused. And that way you give the attention where it's deserved. Right. If you want to come home from work and spend some time with the kids, hopefully, especially when the kids are young, you want to get into that mode real quick. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because you can't just disappear and you know dad's home from work and he's he's gone for right. half an hour, right? Not present, right? Right. When I was a kid, my dad came home from work and he and he went to nap on the couch mm-hmm. every day. Wow, you know, yeah, and that's great. Mm-hmm. And we got to expect yeah. it. And then once he napped, he was he was in the you know dad mode he and was stuff. Good to go yeah, afterwards. he just needed that time to. But it was on the couch mm-hmm. where we were, so we were making noise and stuff. I don't know if he actually got any sleep, <laughs> but he was able to settle down and kind of get into that mode right. and, and sometimes that's important mm-hmm. right so yeah most of the time that's important <laughs> yeah yeah so that was such that's a great conversation stuff. and uh mm-hmm. i really enjoy these conversations on the road i think sometimes people are more real because they don't have mm-hmm. notes in front of them they don't have we don't have an agenda they don't have an agenda it's just a mm-hmm. candid conversation and Again, it, it's what works great in the show. I wish all of our episodes could be on the road. Wouldn't that be awesome? I know. That would be <laughs> a lot of fun. It would be a mm-hmm. lot of fun. People are definitely in a, in another mind frame. Yeah, we heard that with... Different mindset. We heard so. that with Colton last week as well, right? And so mm-hmm. uh, not to let the cat out of the bag, but next week... Uh, we will wrap up our On the Road series. Another conversation, I'm not going to say who it is, but another conversation <laughs> with that somebody I ran into at Kingdom Bound. And again, it's the same sort of scenario where this, you'll you'll have to listen. You'll have to listen. Yes, I'm not going to, yes. I'm not going to let you know who it was. But <laughs> In the meantime, if you uh, want to keep up with Darren um, and We Are Messengers, definitely go to their website and check them out. It's wearemessengersmusic.com. Absolutely. And thank you, Darren, for the investment of time that you've made into me, into this podcast, and into the lives of the people that listen to this podcast. Sure enough. Good stuff. It is time now for some artist advice, and we're checking back in with Brett Perkins of Journey Worship. Jesus is enough. The gospel is enough. Know him better. Give your life to pursuing a relationship to know Jesus better so that you can show him for who he is. But we ask artists, what is the one piece of advice, one piece of advice, the Mm -hmm. most important piece of advice that they could give to artists, worship leaders, people in this business? And and even if you're not in this business, whatever your occupation is, because God has put you there. What is the one thing, one piece of advice that you could give for others to consider? And if that's the one piece of advice that he gave, that says a lot right there. It sure does. Yeah. So simple, sweet, but uh, knowing Jesus, knowing him better, that's what your ministry is all about. If you can't point people mm-hmm. to Jesus because you don't know him, then then there's a problem. So Right. That's for sure. Brett Perkins of Journey Music with Artist Advice this week. And thanks to Darren Mulligan for allowing uh, us to bring him back on Between the Grooves and the words of wisdom that he had to share as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, we are out of time here. I can't believe this episode has gone by so fast. There's <laughs> so much in it. You know, the best way to describe Darren, meat and potatoes. <laughs> he's got a lot of meat and potatoes. Yeah. Like he's got a yeah, lot of yeah. wisdom, a lot of stuff that he says that if you don't stop and listen to what he's saying, it, it'll just skip right past you. And there's right. so much good. Like he's a, I would call him a very wise person. Mm-hmm. Unlike mm-hmm. myself, he's, <laughs> he's like, he's, he blows me away. He really does. 
Oh, we got some wisdom. You got some wisdom there. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah, small portion. <laughs> so thank you once again to uh, Darren Mulligan of We Are Messengers. And don't forget to subscribe to Between the Grooves wherever you get your podcasts. We can let you know when new episodes drop. We always have great conversations that you don't want to miss. Don't forget to like us on Twitter and Facebook and uh, get involved in the conversation as well. If you've got questions, you've got suggestions, even suggestions on guests that we should have on the show, let us know and we'll consider it and, uh, and reach out. 